So we already have the code for computing arc length um, for a function in the form y equals f of x. It's, it's very easy to convert it into a parametric form. So pull up MATLAB, um, make sure you have the code pulled up that we already wrote. And we're going to make some changes to that so that we can find arc lengths for parametric equations. OK, so I had made a few alterations. I was trying some things out um, as I was working with this code um, to make up your worksheet. So I may not have it exactly in the state where you left it. So quickly scan your parameters and make sure they match mine. You can pause the video and look at the screen while you do that. Okay, so hopefully we're all in the same starting place. Uh, when you run the code as I have written it, it looks like what we have over on the left here. Uh, remember the scaling is not the same for y and x. We could uh, spend a little bit of time. It would be a little bit complicated to make that all work out, so I'm not going to bother doing anything more complicated with that. We would write as much code getting that the, the scaling to work as um, we've written so far, so we'll just skip that. So we need to change this to being parametric. So the first thing I want to do is write that, that this is parametric line length as the title. And actually, probably before I did that, I should have saved it as parametric line length. But I can do that now. Parametric line length. So make sure you resave it because if you don't, what you will do is you'll overwrite the old code and you won't be able to find the old code um, if you need to go back and use that. So change it right now. Um, put it in the same file. So notice this folder. Um, it's in the line length folder and I already have one code for line length that we wrote um, earlier and now I'm going to save this as parametric line length. So any changes I make from here on out will be in the new code, not in the old code. Okay, so let's read our opening comment. It draws a curve in the form of y equals f of x. That's no longer true. It's in the form of x equals f of t. And, whoops, and let me go down a line. Add comment symbol, y equals f of t or I should call that g of t, a different function. And it calculates the length of the curve. That's what it will eventually do once we have it all squared away. OK, so our opening comment is up to speed. Oh, we should probably put a title on here uh, or give Kurt Owen. You can say Kurt Owen edited by um, in your own name, so you can put Curto and slash your name. Um, and we can put a date on here. Let's put in 4 13 20 20. All right. So we want to set, oh, I should probably put a space here, set parameters and functions. So now our parameters are going to be time. So we could do this for five seconds. So let's just keep it zero to five in four sub intervals. Um, let us. Oh, now we need time as the variable. OK, so in line 12 here, I'm shifting that to t. And let me do the control, the shift enter. Wherever I had x before, it will put t. OK, so time now goes from 0 to 5 seconds. This little bit of code right here, we're doing a lin space. It will go from 0 to 5 seconds with four sub intervals, so there will be five time values, because remember, we always have two endpoints, not one. So we need one extra value to get that to work out. Um, and now we need to define x and y. So we're going to get x values from the t values. Let's just work with the simple example we had done in a previous video, two times t. And this will give me the x values. All right, and y equals t dot squared. That's already, you know, that's what we had used in that previous example. So let's go ahead and use that. All right, and then we will have maximum and minimum values for the graph. We'll adjust those if we need to later. All right, and we're going to calculate the line length. 
right, let's see, do we need to change anything here? Yes, we do. Okay, so if we look at this, there should be symmetry now. If you remember the equation that we had in the last video, um, we're working with delta L squared is equal to delta X squared plus delta Y squared, and we're going to do those all. Uh, we'll be dividing by T when we go to do the calculus, the, or the delta Ts. But for now, um, the change in X is found by taking the next X, that's what X of IT plus one is, minus the X that we're on within the loop, just like we, it should mirror what we did to get the delta Y, all right? So delta X and delta Y have complete symmetry now because they're both functions of time. We can still find the delta L by taking the square root of the delta X squared plus the delta Y squared. That's that one formula we had for adding up the L's. And then we will sum the L's. We'll add on to what we previously had in order to get the uh, cumulative, cumulative length as we loop through this code, right? So right now I think we're set for four loops. So the first time through the loop, we will take the second X value and subtract the first X value. And we'll do the same thing for Y. We'll square those, add them, and take the square root in the Pythagorean relationship to get the hypotenuse length of each of the lines. And then we will keep a cumulative total to get the length. So this loop is the heart of the code, right? That is the part that drives the train. That's the, the brains. All right, everything else is a plot, all right? Um, now notice because I did the shift enter, this had been X and it was changed to T. We want to actually plot the X and Y values. We don't want to plot the T versus Y values. We want the X and Y values of the graph. And I don't think we need to change anything else. Let's see what happens when we run this. Okay, so it looks like it's working, except that X needs to go further out. So let's adjust our window. So remember that was in the parameters. We had an X min and X max. We want X max to go out to a higher value, maybe 10. Um, it looks like Y max maybe doesn't have to go. Well, it probably still goes up to 25. So let's see what happens when we go out further. All right. So X has a maximum value. I thought it was going to be, oh yes, X will have a maximum value of 10. Let's go out to 12 then. So we get a little, oops, not 112. Let's let X max go to 12 so we can see the endpoint. Right, but you can see Y goes a little bit off of the top. So let's go a little higher in the Y direction. Let's go up to uh, 20, it's only gonna go up to 25. So let's go up to 28 or so in the Y direction. And there we can see the whole curve. And you can see right now it's in four segments. And it says that the total length is 27.7 roughly um, for our total length. If we wanted to scale better, we could squish this in like that. And it would look a little more realistic. Okay, It'd be a little bit more to scale. If we squeeze it in like that, uh, conversely, we can make the Y a little bit bigger by bringing it out, um, we could get that all to work out to be equal in axis size, but um, we're gonna just skip that for now. So there we have it, we have code that should work. Let's look at our second example. Um, we had X was, I believe, two times cosine of T. In MATLAB, you have to put the parentheses in, and Y was three times the sine of t, of always means put parentheses. And with four subintervals, we have a terrible window for this problem. Let's change the window because it's only going to go from, let's make this um, negative four to four. And let's do the same thing in the y direction, negative four four 
and look at that. Okay, oh, that's right, we wanted to go. We didn't make it all the way around a loop. That's a terrible ellipse um, with only four subintervals. Um, but the time only went up to five, and this really should go up to, t should go up to two times pi if I want to get a complete loop. And there we have a diamond because we went around our ellipse in four steps. If we go around in eight steps, we're getting something that looks a little more like an ellipse. And we saw that the, the line lengths went up because we're not cutting the corners quite as much as we had been. We're staying on the track a little bit more. If we go to 16, we're going to get much closer to the length of the circumference of that ellipse. If I go to 32, that looks almost like we would expect the ellipse to look. So 32 um, increments almost makes it look like an ellipse. I can barely see that there are some straight lines in there. If I went to 64, I probably won't be able to see those line segments at all. That looks very smooth. So that's just getting very, very close to the actual length of that ellipse. Um, so we barely had to change any code to make that happen. All right, so I think that prepares us to do some calculus with the lengths of curves using parametric equations.